In the In the Heights film, produced, I believe, by the guy who did Hamilton, Lynn Miranda, he's the same guy who several years ago came out saying, love is love is love is love, really dramatic. And love is 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 love cannot be killed or swept aside. I sing Vanessa's symphony. Eliza tells her story. Now fill the world with music, love, and pride. Thank you so much for this. You know, they always try to infiltrate someone's culture and create it into this effeminate thing that it is not. You know? And they've essentially hijacked the Hispanic culture. And growing up in a Puerto Rican home, for me at least, never was my childhood a musical. Never. Never. And I grew up in Puerto Rico and never in my life was my life a musical. Ever. Ever. But we're in a day in society where they have to tap into different cultures so that then they can go ahead and push to you the agenda, the effeminate agenda, which is being pushed in this actual film. Very similar to the census commercials when they tapped into the black audience and had black type of what they consider things that black people do to try to promote black people to sign the census. This is what they're doing with this particular film, even Disney. We see that as the days pass by in children's cartoons like Owl House, where they introduce children, and these are shows that are rated five, six, seven years old. Children can see this where they learn enchantments, spells, but in this case, they tap into the Hispanic culture with a girl named Luz falling in love with another girl called Amity. We see now that according to Breitbart, Loki comes out as bisexual in Disney Plus series, becoming Marvel's first major LGBTQ lead character. As the days pass on, they will target your community, they will target your culture, they will target anything to convince you and brainwash you into the demonic. And recently, you saw how the world governments came together to discuss UFOs. As the days pass on, keep your eyes open and stay firm in Jesus. For the time is getting closer and closer to that day that the door of the ark is going to be shut. How we humans think about our space and place in the universe is being challenged in ways that not long ago would have seemed downright absurd. We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 miles from the west. With the U.S. military poised to share new details about its secret investigations into some 120 sightings of unidentified flying objects, I think we're, we're those in the know are asking the public to, to keep an open mind. This is a conversation that that may lead us down a road that that may turn out it's not it's not of human origin. I think for me. Luis Elizondo left the Pentagon in 2017 after serving as the director of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, the team that investigates UFOs. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow, look at that, man. Look at the fly. Or what it calls unidentified aerial phenomena, UAPs for short. Incidents that in some cases are captured on video by pilots during training operations, including this unexplained moment from 2015 near Jacksonville, Florida. What you see now in the public media, in my opinion, are some of the least compelling videos. And as compelling as they are, there are some that are even more compelling than that. Leaks about the upcoming report to the New York Times suggest the objects are not a part of any American military or other advanced U.S. government technology. And while there's no evidence of alien technology, it can't be ruled out either. So the otherworldly option remains one of two leading explanations. It's that, or possibly an adversary, China or Russia, leapfrogging past U.S. aerospace capabilities. It's a mystery that has stumped some of the most powerful people in the world. What, what is true, uh, and I'm, I'm actually being serious here, is, is that uh, there are uh, there's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. The truth is that we've never proved one, but there are things flying around up there that we haven't fully identified yet. 
As the days continue to pass, the scripture that warns us and tells us that there is no new thing under the sun continues to become a reality. And the warnings in scripture that told us that in the last days will be as the days of Noah, as the days of Lot. We are seeing things that are abnormal being considered as normal. We are witnessing the evil being called good and the good being called evil. And what many in the church forget is that the same God that instructed Noah to build an ark out of mercy is the same God that also shut the doors of the ark when time for judgment arrived. Are you prepared if that ark door closes today? In Luke 17 verses 26 through 30, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. There's a lot of things that happened in the days of Noah. In the scripture it tells you they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Then it describes the days of Lot. Likewise also it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. The days of Noah, the days of Lot are among us. Yet it's becoming far too common for people. We've been desensitized to the days of Noah, to the days of Lot. And we fail to recognize that we are in a society that has accepted the abomination, the occult, as good. A structure in deep space is so giant it's challenging standards physics. Every single day you hear more and more and more of things in outer space. China plans to send its first crewed mission to Mars in 2033 and build a base there. Trans weightlifter Laurel Hubbard will not have an overwhelming advantage at the Olympics, claims trans sports experts. In a day and age where they blur the lines of male and female, it opens the door, it opens the floodgates for their agendas. And in this case, you have men who cannot make it competing against men. Therefore, because of popularity, they will say that they're transgender and they go to the females Olympics and they compete against females with a wee wee. Okay, they got the equipment on there. They're a man. All right. Yet me saying this is considered hate. Women who work their whole lives to make it to the Olympics. From childhood, they're doing all they have to do academically. All they have to do sports wise, getting up in the morning, running every morning, eating their Wheaties, doing whatever they got to do. All that is wiped away because you're going to place a female who has a completely different type of bone density and muscle structure to compete against a man who couldn't cut it against other men. Where are all the feminists? Where are all the people that are supposed to stand up for women's rights? They're nowhere to be found because this is an agenda that cuts very deep at what they want to do on earth. Transgenders aren't having victory in every country when it comes to this. In the United States of America, there's a runner called Cece Telfer who is ruled ineligible to compete in the U.S. Olympic trials. However, you can clearly see that something is brewing at the door. You know, in Luke 17, 26 and 30, it doesn't mention that in the days of Lot, there was sodomy. In Luke 17, 26 through 30, it doesn't mention other details that happens in the days of Noah either. Yet as you go into the days of Lot, you see that there was sodomy reigning in the land. And when you go into the days of Noah, you see that something occurred that created Nephilims. And the argument of sun success versus fallen angels is one that we can talk about any time if you want to do that. But at the end of the day, whatever these Nephilims were, they happened even after the flood. And these beings, these Nephilims, occurred even after the flood. And I study the topic of sons of Seth versus fallen angels and I've studied it a lot and it's a good topic to cover. 
One question would be is, why would godly men, the line of Seth, marry an ungodly woman, create beings that have six toes? You know, 2 Samuel 21, 20 through 21, And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature, that had on every hand six fingers, and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he was also born to the giant. We have in our day and age, how many quote-unquote godly men marry ungodly women? We don't see, we don't see that. So whatever happened in the days of Noah, we're witnessing right now in our day and age that there is genetic manipulation occurring on a daily basis and it is globally accepted right now. Researchers have introduced a new CRISPR 3.0 system for highly efficient gene activation in plants. Recently, even with Subway, they just announced that their tuna fish, they've done various studies and the overwhelming majority conclude that there is not even any tuna in their tuna sandwiches. As you start looking at our whole food system all around the world, most of it is manipulated. A lot of it is made by artificial hybrid seeds. We're asking basic questions about the genes that control flower production, because flowers lead to fruits and, of course, seeds. And gene editing was just another tool for us to add to be able to do the basic biology. When CRISPR-Cas9 came, it was immediately apparent that we could create mutations in any gene that we wanted in the genome of tomato. The process, of course, could be looked at from the outside as a foreign, unfamiliar, dangerous, GMO-related process. So the way GMO works is that you're taking a piece of foreign DNA, a gene or another piece of DNA that carries a collection of genes, and you're inserting that into the chromosomes of the plant to give a particular trait that's desirable. CRISPR technology works differently than GMO. With gene editing, you're using a set of molecular scissors, and these molecular scissors allow you to cut or edit the DNA that already exists in the plant. And creating edits and mutations, desirable ones, is very similar to the kinds of existing genes and existing DNA mutations that nature has already generated, and those mutations that have allowed us to improve those crops through breeding. I do think that as there's more understanding of what gene editing is doing, it's very clear that it has a huge upside. And the, that huge upside is very different than what was presented as the upside of GMO starting in the early 90s. And that it's really just a tool or a process to create the kinds of changes that you already found in nature that allowed us to have the crops that we eat now. I would hope that CRISPR produced products, whether it's out of my lab or other labs, would be on the shelves within less than a year, and I think that will happen. The big question is, global population is rising, less arable land, less resources, less water, environmental change, is CRISPR-Cas9 going to address these problems? It will not be the panacea. I think that when we look at this technology, we have to look at the hope that it brings for us to be able, for example, to breed crops that now might be more tolerant to extreme weather conditions or that might produce more yield in a static environment. CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing is a powerful technology that simply opens the door to be able to address some of these problems, whereas previously we weren't even in a position to be able to start. When you look at the LGTBQ and all of those acronyms, they keep on adding a letter every day. They keep on adding a letter every time they find a new thing to add to it. But it's blurred the lines between what is human and what is not human. It's blurred the lines between what is female and what is male. 
And as we fast forward into society, if we're still here in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, and you start seeing that through CRISPR technology, that through all of these different technologies that are arriving to Earth via demonic measures, in my humble opinion, that the human race is going to be tainted in such a way where they're going to allow you to create and design your babies in a lab before your baby's even born. None of this is new. You know this. This is not like a special news bulletin that I'm telling you. But what I am sharing with you is, is that we need to be careful not to be desensitized by all of these news that are happening all around us. For these things can become a common thing. And we become numb to these things. But as time progresses, as time passes by, you're going to see that a day will come to earth when the ark is going to be closed. And as time progresses and you start seeing that the world governments will keep on releasing more and more news on quote unquote aliens. And you start seeing the rise of quantum computing. And you start seeing all of these things that are playing a part into a very big deception that is going to hit Earth. The church in America and abroad. The true biblical ministries that are out there. The true brothers and sisters that are street preachers that are preaching the gospel. Anyone out there that is doing their part for the kingdom of God. I urge you more than anything not to forget. The judgment starts at the house of God. This world is going to be judged. Absolutely. But think of how many people were in the days of Noah and how many people entered the ark. Many are going to say in that day, right? We know the scripture, but we live in a society where it's becoming a common thing to live, to live a lukewarm life before God. And there's not a worse feeling on earth than to live a lukewarm life. I know I've had moments in my life where I've been lukewarm. And it's such a horrible feeling because when you are lukewarm, it's hard for you to even pray. When you're lukewarm, it's hard for you to even look up to the heavens. Because you know that you're not living right before God. I've had moments where I've been lukewarm and, and, I, and I, I don't even know what to do with myself. I would ask my dad, dad, can you pray for me? Because God listens to you. I would have other people, can you pray? Because I wouldn't even know how to come and repent before God. I've had moments like that. As I matured, as I get older in the faith, as I become tr stronger in the faith, I've learned one thing. Satan loves to separate us from the love of God. Satan loves to cause us to drift away from God. And when we fall into sin or we fall into a temptation, what was the first thing that Adam and Eve did? They hid. And it's a common reaction because of shame, because of guilt. You hide thinking that God can't see you or, or you try to avoid the inevitable, which is repenting, right? You have to repent or you try to avoid that moment where you can confront what you've done. If that's you today, family, listen, the world is going to be the world. The word of God predicted a day when the bad is going to be called good, the good is going to be called. The Bible warned us of all of these things that are coming, but the Bible also warns us believers to test ourselves to see if we're still in the faith. One thing is for the world to accept the demonic. Another thing is for the demonic to become a common thing in the life of a Christian. If you're going through a rough moment, through a rough patch, I want us to pray today because I don't want you to be in a position or me be in a position that the ark's door closes and we're caught in a position where the waters of the flood begin to overtake us. Jesus warned us for a purpose. Let us heed the warnings. Not because, hey, he's scaring me. No, not that. But it's reality. God loves you. God has a special calling for you. God has not forgotten about your struggles. Turn to Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we live here on earth, we see things on a daily basis that the more we see it, the more common it becomes. The more we experience it, the more okay we are with it. It's not a common thing, God, for us to see them speaking of fallen angels as aliens in the skies. It's not a common thing for us to see that within the church, Gnosticism has been accepted. It's not a common thing for us to see Sons betraying parents, parents betraying children. It's not a common thing to see. 
It's not a common thing to see that when you turn on the television, our children are being bombarded with witchcraft from a very early age. It's not a common thing to see that we live in a day that the sin is called good and the good is called a sin. Allow us, Heavenly Father, to see things for what they are and to allow you to become our truth and allow you to become our standard. What we tolerate becomes our standard. I heard that quote a long time ago. I don't even know where. But the church has tolerated Jezebel. But the church has tolerated doctrines of devils. But the church with itchy ears has tolerated wisdom and knowledge that comes from the occult instead of the true biblical knowledge that comes from the kingdom of heaven. If there is anyone watching this and praying with me right now that has found themselves falling away, that have found themselves having less and less reverence towards you, God, may we repent in the name of Jesus Christ and make you our Lord and our Master once again. Oh, my brother and sister in Christ, as you're praying, I don't know about you, but I, I miss God whenever I fall into a lukewarm state. I've missed God when I've fallen into a status where, man, do I miss my Heavenly Father? Man, do I miss worshiping Him? Man, do I miss talking to Him? He loves you. He loves you. You can't keep on running away from a loving God. It's going to catch up to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Choose this day whom you will serve, and right there where you're at, repent and believe in Jesus Christ, for he loves you. Amen. I love you, family. You know, the warnings in the scripture telling us to repent, the warning in the scriptures telling people to seek God and, and to turn to God while there's still time. These warnings are there for a purpose. Let's heed the warnings. I love you guys very much. Thank you for passing by yet again. Remember to subscribe to our new channel below this video. It's going to say new channel. Subscribe here. Subscribe there as videos will be uploaded there throughout the week as well. Thank you for all your ministry support. It goes a long way. And remember that we have a new website community going. Uh, if you visit tfgministries.com, there's going to be a tab that says Truth Family. Join us today. At Truth Family, we have a great community there where we're talking about the Lord and we're fellowshipping with each other and helping each other out. Um as we're having difficult days, it's it's a really beautiful thing that we're building there for the kingdom of God. So God bless you. Have a blessed, blessed week. And thank you for all that you do. And remember, above all things, seek Jesus.